Hello and a warm welcome to all our ECD NQF Level 4 students. Now this presentation today is very important for every one of you doing this course. The reason being is that there is a lot of confusion regarding what is needed in the portfolio to be able to write your final exam at the end of the learning process. So please ensure that you listen to this video very, very carefully as, as you know, you have to be able to follow all the expectations from this qualification. So let's have a look. The qualification is made up of three segments. That's right, three segments. The first segment is the knowledge modules. The second segment is the practical modules. And the third segment is the workplace modules. So all of you have to listen very, very carefully as I go through all the learning processes through this qualification. So first of all, what you have to know is that there are seven modules in the knowledge segment. And these modules work towards 45 credits. Now, 45 credits equals 450 notional hours. So what does this mean? This means that the average student will work 450 hours doing these knowledge modules. The important aspect here is the average student. Some students might be able to grasp it quicker, but then there are also those that might struggle more and take a longer time to be able to be found competent. Now let's have a look at the seven modules. First of all, it's the introduction to early childhood development. This is on an NQF level four and amounts to four credits. Four credits equals 40 notional hours. So once again, the average student will work 40 notional hours on this module before they are competent to be able to write the test at the end of the module. The second module, KM2, is going to involve theories and perspectives of child development, and this is on an NQF level 5, and that is six credits. So six credits equals 60 notional hours. So once again, the average student will work 60 hours on this specific module. The third module, KM03, KM stands for K Knowledge M Module. O3 is the third module. That is the planning and program development in early childhood settings. It's on an NQF level four, eight credits, therefore 80 notional hours is the minimum time needed to work on this module. Knowledge module number four is facilitation and mediation. So facilitation means teaching and mediating. And that is of active learning. Active learning is direct learning involved with the child. This is on an NQF level five. There are 12 credits. So you can see this is quite an important module because you have to spend a minimum of 120 hours on this module. We get to learning module, module knowledge module number five. That is the observation, observation and assessment in early childhood development. A lot of work when we are assessing students, we are going to be watching what they do because at a very young age, they cannot really write or do things that we can see that they are able to do specific things. So say for instance, a child is climbing on a play gym, you will be able to see that all those muscles are being used. So observation and assessment in early childhood development is learning module number five, it's on an NQF level four, and there are 40 credits there. Knowledge module six is the promotion of health. 
safety and the well-being of children. Emphasis on health, children's health, especially during COVID times is very important. The safety, looking after a child where a parent puts them in your care and you have to ensure that you look after them. This is on an NQF level four. There are six credits, which equals 60 notional hours. The last one in knowledge module is knowledge module number seven, is the administration for early childhood development services and programs. So as we can see, we've worked through the whole process of learning. And the last one is how do we do the paperwork that is needed to ensure that a child uh, is monitored and to see if they are ready to move to the next level. This is on an NQF level three, three credits, which means that it is 30 notional hours. So if we add up all the credits of this specific knowledge modules, you will see it comes to 45 credits and there is a minimum time of 450 notional hours. So recap. The whole qualification is made up of three segments, knowledge, practical, as well as workplace. And not one of them is more or less important than the other. All are very important and you cannot get your qualification if you skip any of these specific aspects. Now we're going to move on to uh, the covering of this module. So as you can see, there are seven modules. Each of these modules has a workbook. All the assignments and tasks in that workbook must be completed. So if it says task one, you must ensure that you complete that task. And then at the end of every knowledge modules, of which there are seven, you will write an internal exam. So how many internal exams are you going to be writing in the seven modules? Seven, all right? As well as all the tasks that you have completed in your knowledge modules. Like I said, there are also practical modules of which we have six. How many credits do the practical modules come to? It's 43 credits. And what do we know? That 43 credits equals 430 notional hours. Because one credit equals 10 notional hours, two credits equals 20 notional hours. So you as the student have to work 430 notional hours minimum to be able to complete this segment of the work. And remember, in the last modules, if we go back, you will see that you worked on there for how many hours? 450 hours. So let's have a look at the six practical modules. So PM stands for practical module, and that is number one, which is zero one. It's the plan and prepare for inclusive educational activities and routines using an approved program based on curriculum framework. This is at an NQF level four, 12 credits. So how many hours are you going to have to work minimum on this specific module is 120 hours. Plan and prepare means that you are going to have an assignment where you are going to plan to do things. You have to prepare the work and then you have to pre present your work that you've planned and prepared to your tutor. The second practical module is the facilitation and mediation of active learning in an integrated and holistic learning program. You are going to learn about integrated analytic learning, and this is on an NQF level five, and there are nine credits. So a minimum time of 90 notional hours must be spent on this specific module. Remember, you are going to be given a task. 
you're going to work on that task, you're going to prepare it, you're going to have everything on paper, and then you're going to have to present this task to your lecturer or tutor, whether it is in front of them or online. So it depends on how you are studying. Practical module three is observe, assess, record and report each child's progress. So if we look at that, we have to observe children. We have to assess them while we are observing them. We have to write down because we have to record the result that we find. Are they able to do something? Are they not able to do it? And then we have to write a report on the child's progress. So it's very easy to understand this practical module because we are actually going to have to look at somebody doing something. We're going to assess what they do, record and report on this child. And how do you present this? You have to present this to your tutor. Practical module number four is support and promote the health, nutrition, safety, protection and well-being of children. This is on an NQF level four. 12 credits, which means that you are going to work on this module for 120 notional hours minimum. And then all the assessments and assignments that you are going to be given, you're going to have to prepare. And then once again, you have to present this to your tutor. And your tutor will then determine if you're competent or not yet competent. Your practical module number five is build and maintain collabor collaborative relationship with parents and other service providers. This is you as the teacher working with the different parents, explaining to them how their children are doing, their progress and what needs to be done to make the child reach competency to move to the next level. The final practical module number six we have to prepare and maintain administrative systems. This is the hard work. This is the part that most teachers do not like. They don't do it like doing the administrative side of things. They like teaching, they like interacting with children, but they do not like the administrative side of things. But this is part and parcel of being a teacher. So this is on an NQF level three, and you will get three credits for that. And that means how many hours you have to work on this? At least 30 notional hours. So let's have a look at the first practical module number one. I am going to show you the activity and then I am going to give to you one of the assignments that I have done so that you can get an understanding of the level that is expected of a practical module. So the first practical module is plan and prepare activities and routines using an approved program based on the national curriculum framework. So we have to work according to the curriculum for ECD students. Now, it says here, yeah, we have to attend an ECD setting for a period of six months, all right? So we have to ensure that for six months, at least, we are working in a school situation at a daycare center, at a play group, or whatever activity is needed to be able to assess the children. Practical modules, which we have to understand, does not have to take place in the workplace. Practical modules can be done by yourself in front of your tutor or you can do that by filming yourself and then presenting it to the tutor. All right. The organization of your facilitator shall provide you with task instructions, including program planning documents, a curriculum framework, resources and equipment in order for you to plan and prepare activities and routines in an early childhood development setting. As I said, this can be done in front of the lecturer at college or online with the lecturer watching you, or you can make a video of it and then present it to your lecturer and then they will give you feedback. Now, 
We have to complete the following activities in the presence of your instructor who must observe the activity and complete the attach, attached observation evaluation form. So there will be an evaluation form which your tutor has and they will tick off to see that you have completed each aspect of the activity. So activity one says you are required to draw up a weekly plan based on the age appropriate guidelines and broad phase setting using the approved curriculum framework. The plan must include age. So what does that say? We have to say, are we going to be doing this activity for one year old, two year old, three year old, four year old, five year old? And stage appropriate activities. Is that activity, if you're choosing uh, one year old to do an assessment, can you ask them to draw a picture for you? No, so it has to be appropriate to the age group that you're choosing. You have to ensure that you utilize scheduling, timetabling strategies to be able to draw this up. You have to apply knowledge on child development ages and stages. You have to know exactly what the brain development, the fine motor skills development of the child is. Those are the seven aspects of child development. You have to know the different kinds of routines that are prepared, including transition times, arrival and departure times, meal times, toilet and hand washing, and rest routines. So it is quite clear. They are telling you what you have to include in your seven day or actually five days because in the week the child attends from Monday to Friday and you have to state exactly what has to be done. The weekly daily plans are prepared according to developmental guidelines for different ages and stages of development including adult directed and child initiated activities. Now note this, every single activity that you do, you have to attach and place in your portfolio of evidence. Because at the end of the day, your tutor will evaluate you and then the principal and I or whoever will check to see that all those documents are completed according to the curriculum of what you are studying. And that is the ECD, uh, Early Childhood Development, NQF Level 4, 131 credits. And we have to see before you write your final exam that you have done everything. So let's look at the activity that I chose. I have chosen to use the activity called Family and My Home, all right, as my weekly theme, and the age applicable is for five year olds. So on the right hand side, you will see that I've developed a weekly plan that includes art and creativity, language and literacy, science and discovery, dramatic play, that's acting out, physical development, that's obviously doing a bit of gym, dancing, climbing, testing your fine and gross motor skills, building and small word play, mathematics and social studies. So I've got a comprehensive plan there, but I have to use those activities and I have to put them into a plan. So what am I going to do? On Monday, I am going to concentrate on doing art. So what type of art am I going to do? I'm going to ask the child to build the home using a cereal box. So they are going to have to cut out and paste and do a lot of activities in building their home. So what is that going to be testing as well? That's going to be testing their fine motor skills. So we're going to assess that. At the same time, I'm going to ask them to count the number of family members that they have living in their own house. So for instance, they would say, it's my mother, number one, my father, two, I have a granny living there, that would be three. I've got a brother, that's four. I've got two sisters, that's five and six. <coughs> Excuse me, and then also myself, which would be seven. 
So we are testing their ability to count. On Tuesday, we are going to focus on language and literacy. We're going to create, create a family tree for grandparents, parents and siblings. We're not going to go too far back because we can't expect a young child to be able to go as far back as that. On Wednesday, we are going to look at social studies. We're going to discuss how each child got their name. Now we know that for instance, Loratu might mean love, and they're going to explain to uh, you as the teacher how they got their name. Who gave them their name? Is it a family name? Uh, what was the reason for it? On Thursday, we're going to do fine motor skills. So it's cutting out pictures and pasting it to charts. And on Friday, we're going to test the gross motor skills. That's dressing up as adults or as professional people going to work. So that is how I'm going to do this practical assignment. So let's have a look at my timetable, my weekly plan. I have, as you can see, it says there, I have five-year-olds. I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then on the right-hand side, I'm giving all the times and what's going to be done. So students will wash and sanitize their hands by 8.05 in the morning. At quarter past eight, we're going to have a sing-along with songs appropriate to family, because remember our theme is family and home environment. At quarter past nine, we're going to give them a short break of 15 minutes, because remember, it's the, the uh, mental span, attention span of a child is not very long. At 9.30, we're going to discuss the theme for the week or for each day. So we're going to explain exactly what's going to be done. At 11 o'clock, they're going to do the activity for the day. 12.30 is going to be break and lunch, where they're going to have their lunch. At 13.30, there's going to be some rest and quiet time. 1500 hours, which is three o'clock, they're going to have games and activities. And then from four o'clock the afternoon, they will again be collected by their parents. So if we look at this, you as an assessor will know exactly what each child has got to do and we can see that we can mark off and say yes this person did proper planning for this specific activity but to make it even easier we are also going to try and look at activity two to give you a better understanding and the level that we expect from you in activity two, it says you are required to set up an inclusive learning environment in an ECD setting. Now, inclusive means that you will have children of different de development stages, or you could have children with learning disabilities. For instance, they could be uh, poor sighted, they could be ADHD or whatever. So we have to now set up an inclusive environment that will look after all people. So the environment should be conducive to learning activities for all children, including the activities that are done, encouraging language and cultural diversity, and accommodating children with barriers to learning. Now, what do we have to ensure? Because this is the criteria that is given to you. You've got to use relevant resources, including learning material and equipment. You've got to consider all barriers to learning and development in an inclusive environment. Apply knowledge on convention of the rights of the child. So we actually have to go look at the Child's Act and we've got to take something from the Child's Act and we have to include it in this uh, specific task we are doing. It says here, the note to the facilitator says that we must observe. So we can see this is a practical module because you are not writing. We are going to observe you doing a specific task and presenting it to us. So let's quickly have a look at the task. I have chosen to use children with ADHD. What does that mean? Attention deficit and hyperactivity deficit. So they will be included in my class activity. 
What is the age of the child I'm doing? I'm using a five-year-old child. So children in this group are three to five to be very active. So we know that children between the ages of three to five are very active. This is my findings. They also have short attention spans. And some children are diagnosed with ADHD, which is attention and hyperactivity deficit. Now, what activities have we chosen that include both non-AD and those with AD? Singing and dancing. A child with hyperactivity likes moving, so they will enjoy the dancing side of it and sing. We just got to watch them because they do get out of hand at times, but they have to keep in sync with it. What other activity can I do with a child with non-ADHD and one with HD? Is ball throwing activity. What is that going to assess? That's going to assess their gross motor skill as well as their eye-hand coordination. What else am I going to do? I'm going to put an HDAD child with a non-ADHD student. And we're going to get them to cut out pictures and stick them onto a sheet of paper. So the non-ADHD person will be able to keep the ADHD person in check. What resources am I going to use? I'm going to use a video of song with dancing moves. I'm going to ensure that I have enough balls so that they can be thrown around. I have to ensure that there are pictures to cut out, scissors, glue and paper. But then it also said I have to refer to the Child Act. So I went to go look at the Child Act and I looked at the amendment of Section 6 of Act 38 of 2005. And in the Section 6 of the Principal Act, it stated by the subsituation and subsection for Paragraph D, we have to ensure the protection of child from unfair discrimination on any ground including on the grounds of health status or disability of the child or a family member of the child. So what is that? I have now ensured that a child with a disability cannot be unfairly discriminated against, so I have followed the instructions clearly of this specific activity too. The last segment is the workplace modules. Remember I told you at the beginning there are three segments. The first one is the knowledge segment. There are seven modules. A minimum of 450 hours have to be worked on that. We then have a practical module of which there are six subsections, six modules. And we have to work at least 450 notional hours on them. And then we have to go into the workplace for a period of approximately six months, of which we have to do 450 notional hours. But we can't just go into the workplace and sit and do something. We have to take our workplace module with us and we've got to give it to the teacher that we are sitting and working with. And they actually have to assess us on four different workplace modules. The first workplace module is WM, which stands for workplace module number one. They have to assess us on learning program and routines planning and preparation process at an NQF level for 13 credits. So 130 hours, guys, have to be spent just on this specific module. You are going to have to do plan preparations for daily planning weekly planning, monthly planning, etc. In workplace module two is the process of facilitating and mediating. So whereas workplace module one is all the preparations, the second segment is where you are actually teaching students. You are mediating a learning program. That means that you can read a book to the child, but you can't just read the book. You've got to ask questions. You've got to go through and make sure all the children understand what the story is about. 
And that has to equal to 150 notional hours, 15 credits. So is it only one story you're going to tell? No, it could be five different types of stories of remember of which you have to keep evidence that you have done that. It can also be playground duty that you have where you're observing the children playing and ensuring that they don't get injured. And it can also include art classes, uh, cooking, baking, all sorts of things like that, which is in the facilitation process. And your work module number three is the processes of observation, assessment, recording and reporting. And this is the most important part. And most of teachers don't like that because they have to watch children while they're doing something. They're going to evaluate them. They're going to say, you know, this child is five years old, but they are actually behaving like a child of three years old. So you would actually understand that they have a disability in some or other way because you have done the assessment. Then you have to write down, you're going to record exactly what your findings are. You're going to say, William is behaving strangely. Um, all the other five-year-olds are climbing up the stairs and sliding down, whereas William climbs backwards up the stairs and then falls forward. So you would see all these things and then you'll have to report what has happened with this child to a specific person, which in this case would be the teacher or maybe the principal that is observing um, the group of students. This is on an NQ of level four and has to cut work out to at least 70 notional hours in the workplace. Your final workplace module, number four, is process and procedures of promoting the health nutrition, safety, protection, and well-being of children in the early childhood development setting. On an NQF level four, 100 notional hours and 10 credits. So what is that? The promotion of health. You're going to have to look at all the different types of diseases that there can be. For instance, teeth decay, uh, earache, people that are not, or the way they look, children that are not clean enough. You've got to ensure the nutrition. You're obviously going to develop your own dietary plans of food that the child's going to eat and make sure that it covers all the aspects that is needed in a child's nutrition daily. You're going to have to look after the safety of the child. You're going to have to prove how you keep a child safe. Do you leave the gate of the swimming pool open? Do, if there's a swimming pool, is the gate closed? Is the gate towards the road closed? Because if the child runs out, so all these aspects have to be kept. The protection and well-being of the children, that's your job as a teacher. You have to protect and take the place of a parent while the parent has put the child into your um, uh, look after so that you can look after that specific child. All right, so that is a hundred credits. So at least 450 notional hours has to be done in the workplace. Now let's have a look at a specific workplace module. This is workplace module number one, WE1, which means workplace evidence number one. We have to plan and prepare inclusive educational activities and routines under supervision over a period of four weeks for two broad phases. So it can't only be one aspect. You have to ensure there's a plan for two different types of activities that are going to be assessed in the workplace by who? The teacher, the owner of the place, or the mentor that is going to be there. Let's quickly have a look at that activity and scope. It says, prepare a weekly program according to workplace and developmental guidelines for different broad-based phases and stages of child development, including adult-directed and child-initiated activities. What type of evidence do you have to give? So they actually tell you what the evidence is. You have to have a weekly and daily activity planner with the supporting documents for at least two activities. What do you have to have? You have to have an attendance register. You're going to have to have a record of self-evaluation. All those aspects they are telling you you have to have. 
set up an inclusive learning environment that is conducive to learning activities for children at different ages and stages. Remember, I've used five. You don't have to use the age of five. You can use whatever you like. And what type of activities? You have to assess language, cultural diversity, and very important, also include children with barriers to learning. I use ADHD because that's quite a common barrier. Uh, it's not always easy to diagnose, but those children fit equally well in a specific schooling environment. Then we've got to select appropriate teaching aids. What is a teaching aid? Is the whiteboard, are we going to use a whiteboard? Are we going to use cue cards? Those are little learning cards. Are we going to show them a video? Are we going to read stories? Those are the resources and materials and learning aids that we're going to have to have evidence of. So what do we have to do as evidence? I have to have photographs of me or a video of the, me doing those specific activities and I have to include it in my activity. So that is how the workplace modules are assessed. So let's quickly do a recap. There are three segments. Which one's more important? None. They are all vitally important. You can't choose one to concentrate and neglect the others. What we have noticed is that children are only doing the workplace, uh, are, are only doing the knowledge-based assignments and they haven't done one practical or one workplace assessment. They come back to the college and say, I've been teaching in a school. And we say, okay, Yes, your workplace module. Let me see how your teachers evaluate. Oh, no, I just sat in the class. That's not how it works. It works according to a module of which you have to follow it distinctly. Remember, if there is one practical aspect that you have not done, you cannot write your final exam. And your final exam is like a matric exam. It is written not at our college. It's written at an exam center. And you will only be able to write that if you have completed every single knowledge aspect, every single practical assignment. So there might be four tasks in each practical assignment and there are six different practical assessments. In the workplace, there are four, but there is numerous aspects that you have to cover and a lot of evidence that is needed. Every single activity in your, workbook, in your workbook must be completed. So everyone gets a workbook, every single module. You have to make sure you do it. You have to ensure that it is marked. Every single person will write seven tests at the end of each module. If you haven't written that test, you will not go on to the next level. For each practical, you have to have evidence of that practical task. And for each workplace assessment, you have to have evidence. And all that aspects will be placed into your portfolio of evidence. Only once you have completed every single aspect, as I've said to you, will you be allowed to write an external exam. How would you know if you're ready? Your tutor would give it to me or to the principal and we will go through and tick it off to make sure that all activities have been completed and that you are competent of that. Only once you are competent and you have written your final exam and passed that and have your portfolio 100% correct will the QCTO issue you with your certificate. So let's have a look at popular questions that children ask. Can I teach grade R with an ECD? Yes, you can, but it is also recommended that you complete your NQ of level five as well. So that's a question that everybody asks. Can I do educate after doing ECD? Yes, you can, because ECD is on an NQ of level four and entry into educate is and NQF level four qualifications. So you may go on to study with us to do your NQF level six and receive a national diploma. Can I do my workplace segment while doing the other segments? Yes, the answer is yes, you may. But remember, 
you have to still produce us with those documents that you have covered each aspect that you have done. And remember, not all of that you would have been taught yet. So only once you have been taught a specific aspect will you be able to do that specific task. Where do I write my final exam? That QCTO will allocate an exam center closest to you. So if you are living in Cape Town, in Musenberg, they will look at a center as close as to Musenberg as possible. If you are living in Hamanskral or Temba area, they will allocate a center as close as possible to where you are so that you don't have to travel a long way. Is this qualification you're doing accredited? Yes, it is. It is one of the best qualifications because, listen carefully, this qualification used to be under the ETDP set, uh, CETA. That stands for Education Development Training Practitioners uh, CETA. All those qualifications are now going to be falling under the QCTO. So this is the first one that's falling under the QCTO. Soon the NQF Level 5 will fall under the QCTO as well. And then you will be certified. Now, if there are any other questions that you might have, please feel free to speak to your tutor or pop an email on info, I-N-F-O, at S-A-A-C dot C-O dot Z-A, and we will be able to answer you by email. So good luck. Ensure that every aspect is followed because ignorance of not knowing what is expected of you is no excuse. It is your duty, as they say in education, it's your duty to ensure that you have all the evidence needed to be able to be found competent. Thank you and enjoy the course.